And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. Glad to have you joining us, and we trust that you've had a wonderful day. And um, if, if your day's been challenging, or if your day's been a, um, a whirlwind, uh, we trust that our time together will encourage and inspire you and um, give you something to look forward to in life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Like better days. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we're so happy to see you. And happy to have you. Uh, when the last time that I was with you last week, we were um, out on spring break, and so Dr. Bill filled in um, admirably. And so um, we had started sh uh, sharing when I was here last uh, two weeks ago on maintaining the position of faith. First Timothy chapter six, verse twelve says, "Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life." Whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Glory to God. Or confessed a good confession before many witnesses. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, you take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. Um, 20th century says, and having fought to the end, still stand your ground. Um, um, Phillips says, uh, when you fall to a standstill, uh, you may still stand your ground. Glory to God. Talked about last time we were together how that um, faith is not an event. It's a journey. It's a life. The just shall live by faith. That that verse in in all uh, slightly different forms um, and wor verbiage, but really the heart of that is stated four times in the Bible. Once in Habakkuk and then three times in the New Testament. The just shall live by faith. Live by faith. Not have faith events or faith, just faith projects, but he shall live by faith. And so we come and we kind of started into this into Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And, um, you know, we just, it's a great chapter. We um, have taught many, many, many messages from Hebrews chapter 11. Many, many messages in the body of Christ have been taught from here. And um, it is a reminder of people living their life in faith, living their life in accordance with what God said do, walking it out to the end, glory to God. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance, the title deed, the guarantee of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So in other words, um, faith is your promise. It's your receipt. It is your guarantee that what you believe God for, you have. Remember Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three that what things serve you, or 24, when you ever, what things serve you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Hallelujah. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen, our faith is that unseen promise, that unseen guarantee, hallelujah, that unseen substance that what we believed God for, we have. For by it, that is, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which 
do appear. Hallelujah. Or, or are visible. The things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. It was done through faith. God's word created. And by faith it was done. By faith Abel offered a more excellent offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice <coughs> than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous God testifying of his gifts and by it that is by faith he being dead yet speaketh his faith still speaks his faith still speaks by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him for they that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him praise God so here we have Enoch saying the Bible says he pleased God and then the next verse tells us that without faith you can't please God now I didn't say without luck now listen I, I, I know all these other things I'm about to say are good but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says without faith, you cannot please God. So it didn't say without love, you can't please God. It didn't say without good works, you can't please God. It didn't say uh, without um, grace, you can't please God. It says without faith, you cannot please God. I'm not negating the validity and the value and the importance of those other things I just named. What I am saying, the Bible makes it very clear that faith plays an essential, central role in the life of the believer. That without it, you're gonna, you cannot please the Father. So it's not a subject we can take lightly and go, well, um, <clears throat> I've got love, that's all I need. Or I'm walking in under grace, that's all I need. Or I've got all these good works, that's all I need. You can't do that. This is vital. We, we are to live by faith. We're to live by faith. Hallelujah. And we could teach on grace. We could teach on the value of grace and the importance of grace. And, um, you know, why grace, uh, the faith, the, the dealing of uh, uh, Every man, the measure of faith is a grace of God. But that would be another subject. And I'm so again, I'm not negating that. Okay. But what I am saying is that grace is essential. Grace is vital. Grace. I mean, I'm sorry. Faith is and grace is too. But great faith is essential. Faith is vital. Faith. Now here, faith is what we live by. We live by faith. And it is how we honor and please the Father. Glory to God. It goes on, it says here, that by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his house. Glory to God. Moved. Moved with fear or moved with a, a, an awe and a reverential awe. Um, not afraid like a, a rattlesnake, but, you know, we, we kind of get that, mind, you know, when it's like a, you're watching the Blair Witch Project or something, which I wouldn't watch. Hallelujah. And did we look under, um, I'm sorry, something happened over here. Did we look under over here, th this blanket's on that step. Okay. Sorry. There's a. And mystery solved. 
Hallelujah. Prepare, listen, being warned of, of God of things not seen yet. Faith has to look at the realm of what is not seen, but God has said would be or we're supposed to do or to respond and live there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In faith, in victory. Um, he prepared an art to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Because they mocked him. Remember, 120 years he preached that the floods were coming. They'd never seen rain. They'd never seen floods. You don't see, you don't see floods if you don't get rain. Um, they didn't see any of it. He said it was going to happen. They didn't believe him. But he built that ark. And um, I guess one of my next projects is to go see the, the ark project. Um, family in our church went and saw it and uh, said it was amazing. It's, I've seen pictures. It's amazing. Um, they, they built it according to trans, transcribing the uh, measurements from the Bible and built that according to that blueprint. And um, it's an amazing thing. I got, I've got to see it in person. Hallelujah. And he did that by faith. He built it on dry land, didn't build it at, at the ocean's edge on a, a ship dock, you know, where they're going to, you know, where they, when they get ready to commission it, they release it and it slides into the ocean. The floods came and picked it up where it was. By faith, Abraham, oh, the father, our father of faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should have to receive an inheritance, obeyed. Faith will obey God. Because to go and do something that makes no sense when God tells you to takes faith. Remember, get thee out of thy family, get thee from thy father's house, away from thy kindred, <coughs> and thy land, and go into a place that I, I'm, I mean, you're not even going to know where you're going when you leave. You're just leaving. I'll show you later. Now, human nature is listen i don't leave on vacation not know where i'm going i always I, we pretty much know where we're going to be every night um when we're traveling hotels are set up res reservations are made i think a couple of years ago we did one of the first trips we've ever done where we made the reservations the day of while we were traveling and um worked out pretty good most of the time there were a couple of nights we went and eh. um because we didn't know, you know, got into it. Went. I actually drove into one place one time went, and on on a, uh, on the trip. Got to the hotel, walked in, and said, eh -eh. "Walked back up, and said, forget it, cancel our reservation, and uh, went somewhere else <laughs> for good reason." But human nature is, I want to know where I'm going. I don't, you know, I don't want to just, you know, do, I want to, I want to know where I'm going, why I'm going there, when I'm going to get there, that kind of thing. God tells Abraham, not just go on a trip. He says, move. That'd be like packing up your whole house in a U-Haul and just taking off, not having a clue where you're going and getting on the road and riding. And God saying, here it is. Stop. Unload. Yeah. Most people want to have the job settled ahead of time. All, you know, all the things that we are trained in, in, in life to do that we consider responsible but faith is going to have you do things that, that God's going to ask you to do or to walk in certain paths or certain directions that you don't see the outcome. You don't see what's going to happen. You're just a walking in obedience. And that's a faith walk. Glory to God. He obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city in whose, which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was um, past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, 
and of him as good as the dead. As men, remember, even as one as good as dead. Glory to God. Isaac was that one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here, this is talking about Abraham. I, I, I jumped ahead. This is talking about Abraham. He, he's 99 and she is 90. It's as good as dead. You, you ain't having youngins. Hallelujah. These all died in faith. I'm sorry. Sprang forth of and, and him as good as dead. So many as the stars in the sky and the multitude. And as a sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Now these all died in faith. Having not yet received the promise. Now remember Abraham did not see the multitude of his seed. He didn't see the sand of the seashore at the start of heaven. He saw the one seed. He didn't see this multitude of seeds. Received the promises, having seen them afar off, were persuaded them and embraced them and confessed they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to, re to return. I preached a sermon a number of years ago called Egypt Ain't All That. <clears throat> the law folks want to go back into Egypt. Let me just tell you, it ain't all that. Hallelujah. That's why you wanted out in the first place. But now they desire a better country. That is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their father. For he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Of whom it is said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence he also received him in a figure. He had already received Isaac raised from the dead when he left to go to the mount. Remember, I am the last to go yonder and worship and come again unto you. Praise the Lord. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, hallelujah, and uh, worship leaning upon the top of his staff. By, Jason, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he that hath respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover, the sprinkling of blood, lest he, sh he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, when the Egyptians essayed to do so were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished with them, not believe, uh, them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say? By, um, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, and of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, and out of weakness were made strong. Waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the allies, aliens, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. 
and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and of imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted and slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God would have provided something better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Now think of the what I said earlier. Faith is not an event, it's a life. It's a lifestyle. We just read how so many of these didn't receive, they did not see the fulfillment of what God promised them. Yet they lived and even died in faith. Lived and died in faith. So what does that tell me? Faith is a spiritual substance that does not um, cease to exist because you physically depart and die. Um, I was listening to Billy Brim one day a number of years ago, and they were talking about Rhema Bible Church uh, there in Tulsa on, on the campus of Rhema Bible Training College. Um, the church, the, the, the college started first. The church came later. Um, it started out as a Bible training center, just you know, training pe people for ministry. And, um, but the property that it was on, and they didn't buy all this at one time. Uh, they, bought, um, they, they bought a, a warehouse with an office building. They had some acreage with it, um, not much. You know, I, I don't know if it was 20 acres or, or whatever. Not, it was a huge amount. Now they're over 100 acres. I forgot how many acres, but it's well over 100. Um, and they own, you know, there's lots of buildings there. They bought the old skating rink and they convert, added to it and converted it. Um, they bought the apartments across the street. They bought, you know, places around them. They've, they've added to and added to it. It, it enlarged that campus. Uh, maybe Jesse can find out what the size of Rayma is uh, acreage-wise now. But um, when, when Rama first moved to Broken Arrow, they, um, they started in 1975 based on the word in the, I believe, 73 camp meeting that Brother Hagen received that he was going to start a Bible school. Or 72, and they started in 74 and graduated their first class in 75. I forget the actual. Let's see, 75, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80. It was, they, st they graduated the first class in 75. Mine was the seventh graduating class, and I graduated in 81. 110 acres. Okay, there are 110 acres uh, there. But uh, they always, people talk about, you know, Broken Dare was nothing but a little cowpoke town. <coughs> people still rode the horses in the town and tied them up. And literally, they, they, they were, it was all ranches right around the, you know, the city. And they, people ride, actually ride the horses in the town and put them on the hitch post um, to do, go in and shop and buy stuff. Um, it, you know, it's not that anymore. I mean, it's, it's, it's exploded since then. But huh, they still have the hitch post. I guess some folks still show up. Because you can ride two miles out of town, and there's ranches everywhere, horse ranches everywhere. There's horses all over the place. But when they first bought it, it was just, it was, it was prairie, you know, ranch land all around there, everywhere, everywhere. I remember leaving my apartment in Tulsa and driving over to Broken Arrow. It was a two-lane road. <coughs> and once you let the Tulsa City limits, it was nothing. It was just, it was just barren. And that's not, you know, now it's houses and stuff. But back in 81, 80, 81, that era, it was just, it was just, you're out in the boonies. I mean, they piped the sunshine in. I mean, the road was literally, they poured asphalt on a dirt road. They were, they were, I mean, they weren't, they hadn't graded them or anything. They were just bumpy, level, holes all in it. I mean, that's how the roads were. But the land was on an old family farm that Raymond was on. And um, they got to doing some research. And in doing the research, they, they found the family who originally owned that land. And, <coughs> and um, praise the Lord. 
owned that land. And the grandfather of the person that was telling this, now this, this grandchild was older now. They were, they were elderly. But remembered, their, their grandfather gotten saved. And on that property, there was a, there was a little knoll. Now, now, you understand in Oklahoma, what we, what we call a knoll and what they call a knoll are two different things. What we call a mountain, what they call a mountain are two different things. What they call a tall tree is a seedling to us. Okay? I remember going out there and they're they saying, uh, this is green country. And I'm thinking, well, you guys don't get out often. And I'm from North Carolina. This ain't green. This is sage. Maybe a variant of green, but it ain't green green. It's not, you know, it's not lush, healthy, moisture-rich green. It's, you know, usually we look at that and say, that thing's about to die. And, um, and so we're, you know, um, but this little knoll, he, we, the grandpa would go out there and pray. And pray and, and seek the Lord and, and ask God to use this land to reach the nations. For the gospel to be go, go forth from this, this land and from this property and go reach the nations. And he died. And the land, you know, became other things. They actually ended up building that, that uh, commercial building, uh, office building and warehouse on it. Um, but after researching from talking to the grandkids and um, analyzing the layout of the, of the property, the best they could ascertain is that knoll, that little area, is under the footprint of Raymond Bible Church today. We're Rhema Bible Church, the head organization, obviously now, of Rhema Bible Training Center. We have over 250 campuses around the world, reaching over 15,000 students every day, teaching them and training them to go into their, their nations and to go to other nations and preach the gospel. We have over 70,000 worldwide Rhema graduates preaching the gospel. Um, they like to say this, the sun never goes down on a, um, on a rhema person preaching the Bible. Glory to God. Somewhere in the earth, there's a rhema person preaching the Bible all the time. Glory to God around the world. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And that man prayed in faith. That man prayed believing. He prayed believing that God would use that property to reach the nations. Who knew back in the 20s or whenever, I think it was around the 20s or something, um, this was going on, that today we would walk onto that, that campus, 110 acres, and from that place has been launched Pastors, evangelists, missionaries, traveling ministries all over the world taking the gospel of Jesus Christ and transforming nations with that gospel. When Jim and Marion Zirkel arrived in Guatemala uh, back in the 70s to begin their work there, that nation was considered 3% Christian. Now, we're talking non-Catholic, okay? It was considered 3% evangelical Christian. Today, it's over 35%. Hallelujah. They've got a Bible school there and had for decades. Brother Jim's gone home to be with the Lord. Sister Mary remarried, and they're continuing the work, they're continuing to preach the gospel there. Continuing to do the will of God. But they came out of Ramah. From that prayer of that saint. For God to use that property. To reach the nations. The nations are being reached. He died in faith. Having not received the promise. He never saw it. On this side. But his faith. Has stood. I believe it was, um, um, 
I think it was Finney. I'm trying to remember the old, old preacher that um, prayed. Um, he prayed for a friend to get saved. I, I can't remember if it's Finney or not, but it was, it was one of the old era preachers. Prayed, his, prayed and prayed and prayed for this uh, man to be saved. And he, he'd go out and win people to Jesus all the time. He couldn't get his friend saved. And at his funeral, the man gave his heart to Jesus. He didn't, get, he didn't get to see it on this side, but he sure did get to see it when the guy showed up in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. Faith is a journey. Faith is a force, a subject that does not cease. It's there. It continues. God still holds the universe in, in, in line by faith. The word of light be is still in force by faith. Faith is powerful. And these all died in faith, having not received the promise. Glory to God. I said glory be to God. So don't, don't give up. Don't quit. Faith is released into the atmosphere. And it works. Even if it works after you're dead, even if it comes to pass after you're dead, it's still working. Glory to God. I said, think about it. Abraham had Isaac, but God said, your seed shall be as the sand of the seashore and the stars of the heaven. And he died not seeing that, but it came to pass. <laughs> Glory to God. Can you say amen out there? I see some hearts and all kinds of cool stuff. Praise the Lord. Amen. We talk about David. We talk about Abraham. And I shared about Abraham last time we were together about, you know, prune womb Sarah and um, she laughing and hallelujah. We have made faith in some, in, in too many cases, this instant box of Hungry Jack potatoes or this box of, instant, of Hungry Jack instant potatoes where you put a little milk and a little butter and some water, heat it up and throw the things in there and stir them up and wham, you got potatoes, mashed potatoes. Well, you got cooked potatoes, dehydrated and then mixed with stuff and become if you leave, don't make them, if you don't put enough milk or uh, stuff in it, there'll be there'll be wallpaper paste. Um, I mean, you know, you, you got to put it, you got you got really work on it because it'll just it'll just anyway. They don't taste like real, but they don't taste like you took a pot, you boiled it, you mashed it up yourself, okay? You added the butter, you added the heavy cream and. The salt and the pepper and stirred it up real good. I know some people put sour cream in there. Some put sprinkle a little garlic powder. However you do it, but it don't taste the same. The, that, that Hungry Jack don't taste the same. Or Idahoan or whatever brand you use, they don't taste the same. It's made from scratch. They just don't. Um, you know, um, but they are convenient. And a lot of times we, we live our lives what we call the faith walk, we want it like the box of instructions. You find a scripture, you make a confession, you say it five times, you say, I receive it now, and poof, you got your pot of answer. The Bible says with impatience, possess ye your souls. Bible says that we're to ask in faith, nothing wavering. Amen. Not to be double minded. Look over to James real quick. James one one James, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, or puts patience to work. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let me say that one more time. That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing or lacking nothing. Wow. See, with instant potatoes, you heat the water up to a boil. You put the butter in, you pour the milk in, you dump the pre-measured flakes in, you stir it, and you've got it. There it is. But the Bible says that we're going to have to let patience have her work in our faith walk. We're going to have to let patience have her work in our faith walk. Glory to God. Pay. This is why I want you, I'm trying to make the point. If we're going to maintain the position of faith, we have to view it when we start as a journey and not an event. Glory to God. It's a journey and not an event. Glory to God. Your journey, faith, your destination, victory. Hallelujah. Your journey, faith. Your journey is faith. Your destination is victory. But it's a journey. You walk it out. And you're going to have markers along the way of victory. Markers along the way of, uh, of things receiving and believing and receiving and but it's not just you know you did it once and it's over with it's going to be a lifestyle we live by faith not we don't um you know we don't have faith events we have a faith lifestyle there are events in our walk of faith but it's not how we that's not what we do we just don't go from event to event we go from the lifestyle. This is how we're going to live. In other words, you're not moral today and you'll be moral the next time it's necessary. Hello? Now, you eat food when you need to. Some of us eat it when we don't need to, but um, you're not continuously eating. You are continuously breathing. So eating is an event. You get hungry, you eat to satisfy the hunger, okay? And then you go, and you don't eat again until, you know, unless you're just a nervous eater, but I'm just talking about, let's talk general. Um, you don't eat again until um, you're hungry again. However, you breathe all the time. You're constantly breathing. Why? Because you have to breathe to live. Okay? I know you can say, well, you got to eat to live, but you understand, the point is, faith is like breathing. You do it. You, that's, you have to do that all the time. You're not going to have, you're not going to go from event to event with faith. Or only use it when there's a need. You're going to live by it. And then it will govern you when there is a need. It will be an operation when there is a need, and it'll be an operation when there's not a need. Hallelujah. Can I say get an amen out of you? So to maintain the position of faith, let's look at the Hebrews chapter 11, heroes of faith, and how they um, lived and even died in faith, not having seen the end or the results of their faith. Even that, even in that, it still came to pass. 
and the promise that God made was sure and the promise that God made came to pass and it was so. Amen? Glory to God. Isn't that, isn't that worth getting happy about? Amen. So even when you don't feel like it, you still live by faith. You ever had a cold? You, you know, uh, I'm faithful, so I don't get colds. Okay. But in one of your moments of not living by faith, have you ever had a cold? Okay. You know, um, and, you know, it hurt to breathe and it hurt to do anything. And you may go, man, I don't even want to breathe. You know, because if I breathe, I'm going to cough. When I cough, my head hurts. But what? You got to breathe. There could be times in life you don't, will, you don't want to, you may not want to live by faith. But you are just and you must live by faith. You keep living by faith even when it doesn't, you don't like it. Now, I know in our circles, you run to the, you know, we run to the, the faith seminar and we're going to get a new uh, Lamborghini for believing God. And so we're running out. We're all excited about believing God for a car. And that's an aspect of it. But that's not the sum of the lifestyle of faith. Faith will produce certain things, but those certain things are not the sum of faith. Because the life of faith is what you live all the time as a believer. It is what you do. And, and, and I think so much of what we've done in an effort to teach faith, and I, and I get it, and I, I, if I go teaching on certain things about believing and receiving, I will go along those lines again. But we, we haven't come back enough and said, listen, this isn't the sum Using your faith to believe and receive and, and get something that you have need of from God is not the sum of faith because the sum of faith is how you live all the time every day. Amen. And so we've made it about the events and that's why. And so people have, have you there and their thought and so forth relegated it to using faith for an event. We really have to be in the position of faith all the time. I remember, um, oh, I want to say 90. Oh, gracious. When did um, Raymond Bible Church open? We were at a winter Bible seminar before Raymond Bible Church opened the, 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 the building. You know, they, they were running Raymond Bible Church out of the Nanowski Center. <clears throat> um, you know, the, the, church, the church started in 85, but the building wasn't built, the, the big, the, the, uh, the, the building that they have down for the church, which is an, a, a one-acre footprint. Pretty big. Um, but they were, they, uh, the church was being held in the uh, Nanowski Recreation Center. Okay, so prior to 92, so this is late 80s, right around 1990. We were, we were in a Bible seminar there, and, and, and um, it was in the Nanowski Center. And uh, Brother Copeland and Brother Savelle were there. They were at the back. They had kind of uh, Sister Gloria and Brother Copeland and uh, Jerry, and, um, I forgot Jerry Savelle's wife's name, but her, they came in. They, they were sitting at the back. And um, and um, when service got kind of, you know, the service was over, they were doing all the announcements and this kind of stuff about the next service and so forth. They slipped out. And across the street at that time was a, a right, I mean, right across the street. You walk out the door, walk across the street, there's a little sh shopping strip mall there. Uh, in there was a um, Carolyn Savelle. That's Jerry Savelle's wife's name. I just remembered. Um, went in there, and there's a bookstore. It was a Christian bookstore. And um, you know, Brother Cope was in there. And uh, he just walked around looking at books, seeing what was there, and he sneezed. And the guy behind the counter either didn't know who he was or just didn't know not to say anything. Said, by God, brother, you coming down with a cold? And Brother Copeland said, and I went, I'm the healed of the Lord. We got off about 10 minutes quoting scripture and, 
I mean, declaring the Bible and he was healed and he would, you know, he, he, you know, and so forth. And finally he kind of came to himself and stopped and the guy was just standing there looking at him and went, you believe it, don't you? <laughs> well, <coughs> when you live it all the time, that's what comes out of you is faith. So let's maintain the position of faith. Here's, here's the, I'm not sure what right word, the, the answer to that statement or the question would be, how do we maintain the position of faith? By living in faith all the time. We remain steadfast in Jesus' name. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, uh, trust that blessed you and helped you and uh, will be a blessing to you in the future um, as we make adjustments to live by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. It's time to receive the Wednesday night by uh, time of an offering. If you haven't, if you're giving uh, electronically through PayPal or, or Square Cash app, you can go ahead and get that ready. Um, and uh, they'll put the information up on the screen. And most of y'all watching, I know y'all know this, uh, how to give electronically. And, um, but we always like to put it out there in case somebody's watching who wants to be, wants to support. Hallelujah. And um, thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the people as they give, as they tithe and sow into the kingdom of God. Thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them and that you pour out blessing. You pour out blessings on them they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you for your support. Thank you for being a part of, the, of our time together. Trust that you are minister to. Trust that God will continue to bless your life. Till we meet again, rem remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.